welcome to the um, September 18th Transportation and Parking Commission meeting. Um, I'm calling the meeting to order. My name is Jim Nash, I'm the chair, and uh, we'll go around and do some interrupt introductions here. I'm Jamalia Shara, I am the uh, vice chair. Alan Verson from the planning board. We tighten the planning scale department. Donald Scali, DPW. Jim Albert Fisher, citizen. Maggie Chan, DPW. Nancy Forrestal, treasurer collector's office. Beth Catwood, DPW. Thank you, everybody. And we do have a quorum until five at least, all right? Um, we'll keep track of that. Uh, the other thing is everybody needs to know that we are being both audio and video recorded today. Um, I turned the camera on just a few moments ago. Um, and that is, um, you can view these proceedings later on Northampton TV. Um, you can see yourself on TV, it's pretty exciting. Um, at this point, uh, we welcome public comment. Um, so there's a, uh, there's, I imagine many of you are here for items that are on the agenda. On the agenda, when we're speaking about those things, we'll introduce them and anybody who'd like to speak to them, you're welcome to speak at that time. But you can also make a statement now if you'd like. Um, so is there anybody who'd like to speak? Sarah. Um, my name is Sarah Haugen. And Sarah, I'm, come, up, sorry. come to the podium okay. and state your name and have it for the record. Sure, I am Sarah Haugen, I'm at 24 Elizabeth Street. And I'm just um, here observing, hoping to join you up there on this commission. I am, I've lived here for 17 years and I've always lived and worked downtown. I don't own a car. Um, I work in service so I hear about incoming people all the time and their parking issues and their driving issues. Plus I have a strong interest in public transportation and sidewalks. So <laughs> just wanted to introduce myself. Thank you, Sarah. Is there anybody else who'd like to make a comment? All right. Um, first thing, uh, uh, the third thing on our agenda is approval of the minutes from the previous meeting. Um, would somebody like to make a motion? Move to approve minutes from June 19th. Second. So we have a first and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any no's? Okay. On to the next thing. Um, reports from departments and subcommittees. Announcements and presentations. Um, so we have a number of departments here. Is anybody want to go first? Uh, Lane or Donna? Or? Yeah, I have a bunch of updates. I'll try to move through them quickly. Um, Hinkley Street, major construction has been completed. $3 million project and the road has been paved. Um, the contractor is just finishing up detail work such as concrete steps and short retaining walls, but uh, the project is more or less substantially completed at this time. Uh, Columbia Gas is continuing to install new gas services on Pleasant Street between Main Street and Kirkland Avenue. We anticipate that work will be completed later this month because it's Columbia Gas's work, not PW's work. Chesterfield Road repaving. Chesterfield Road from Spring Street to Shepherd's Hollow will be reclaimed this week. Contractor is going to be grinding up the existing pavement to create a new base layer. This project also includes replacing the water line and drainage improvements. Project value is approximately $600,000 and will be complete this fall. Uh, Pleasant Street, Hampton Ave, Fulton Ave, and Wright Ave are currently being reconstructed. Project also includes drainage work, some sidewalk work, and pedestrian crossing improvements, particularly on Hampton Ave. Contractor is Warner Brothers. It's a $1.1 million contract, and that work will be later this year. Pavement marking, so also called our line striping contract. Uh, the bid opening was on July 12th. Um, what we're going to be doing is refreshing yellow center lines, edge lines, speed hump markings, turn arrows. Uh, we're also going to be marking up the intersections of Henry Street and Montview Ave, as well as Nonsuch Street and South Main Street, something we discussed at length before this commission. Um, looking at a little bit under $50,000 for that. Um, by November of this year. And crack sealing, um, we anticipate that that work on um, select city streets will be complete 
by November of this year as well. Um, a couple of other notes, Clement Street Bridge, um, the contractor has made good progress on this. The bridge is closed. Um, it was ordered to close after a mass DOT inspection last year. So um, currently the contractor is fabricating parts for remaining structural work. We anticipate project completion in October, um, but we will need to wait on mass DOT approval to actually reopen the bridge. Um, that's about a $300,000 project. And last thing is the King Street Corridor Improvement Project. There will be a design public hearing held to discuss improvements along the King Street Corridor between Bright Street and the rail truck crossing north of Church Street. This hearing is scheduled for September 25th at 6.30 p.m. in City Council Chambers, which is here. Um, the project will include intersection improvements, turn pockets, replacing traffic signal equipment, signalizing state and Finn Street intersection, upgrading pedestrian signals, providing five-foot bicycle lanes, and providing a tree belt. This project is on the tip and is scheduled for 2021. Wow, that's great. Um, did, did you mention striping out, out on, on Route 9? Do we do that, or is that the state? The city owns all the pavement markings. So Where exactly are you talking about? Is, I'm sorry? Where exactly are you talking about? Uh, Florence and Leeds? Yep, is, that's all city. Okay, is that? On the left, Correct. Yeah. Oh, I guess. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, any other department updates? Yeah, the updates. Um, so the Pleasant Street Complete Streets project, we just did final inspections yesterday, so we're going to sign off on that piece and then leave it for Donna doing the repaving. Um, the City Hall sidewalk project is finished tomorrow. The last step was the hand railings for the ramp. Um, Valley Bike, we just hit uh, 60,000 miles of people riding Valley Bike, so mostly successful. Um, we are having a problem, particularly in Springfield, with people ripping off the baskets, um, and that exposes a part of the bike that can't be exposed, as they have to go to the shop, um, and so we're having fewer bikes on the street than we'd like, but again, that's 60,000 miles. Um, we opened bids for redesigning Main Street. This is a $70,000 project, eventually leads and years from now for full reconstruction of Main Street. So now we're evaluating the bids. We should be awarding that within a month. Um, we're, I think I made, I can't remember if I reported this the last meeting or not, but we're looking at doing rezoning for both downtown and Florence. Um, most of it is with private property, but it has some effect because we want to code what we require private people to do on public streets. So typically if someone's doing the building, they're rebuilding up to the curb line of the street. Um, and, but we've been sort of haven't had a clear standard for what that means. So if you look at, you know, I keep using the example of Shaw's Motel, that we know we like a, a six foot sidewalk, we know we like a 10 foot tree belt, but we know we like drainage, but we don't have all that distance. So what the priorities are are sort of somewhat random because of the planning boards are trying to code those things out. Um, so there'll be public hearings on that in October. Um, we're waiting on two final grants, which we're 90% sure we're going to get. $100,000 to deal with some of the uh, curb, uh, the uh, uh, route problems of the bike path, particularly through downtown. $100,000 doesn't go as far as we'd like, but at least it's going to make some difference. Um, and then a larger grant for a bike path through uh, Burt's Fall, which is essentially that goes from Burt's Road to Overlook Drive and to Sandy Hill Road. So that'd be a nice connection. Nice. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other updates? Um, okay, so we have a number of items on the agenda here. Um, one of the things that, that um, the Grove Avenue is way down at the bottom, and I'm going to, first we're going to do Wilder Place, and then um, I'm going to move Grove Avenue up. So anything that, you know, we need to vote on or can get done before certain commissioners need to leave. So, um, Fruit Street, or, hold it. What, what agenda am I looking at? <laughs> well, I'm the chair, so I want to talk about Wilder. <laughs> yeah, what is this? <laughs> I must have. You're on the wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, there we go. All right. Thank you. 
So, Wilder Place. Uh, so we discussed this at the last meeting, uh, and we uh, made recommendations that um, uh, the DPW consider some, uh, go out and look at Wilder Place and consider some ideas uh, to uh, address some of the parking issues there. I don't think Maggie's got anything to report on that today. Is that correct? We just have the width of the street. It's 22 feet wide, so it is narrow as the residents know. Right. Yeah. And and I think a number of residents would like to speak to it today. And so, so I think that that's what we'll do now. We have a diagram of it up here, um, which indicates that on both that the parking is allowed on both both sides of the street, the street, and I, I suspect that that's what will likely be explored is maybe designating one side or the other. Uh, so, is there anybody you'd like to speak to this? And step up to the podium, give your full name and address. I'm Scott Norris, I live at 20 Wilder Place in Florence. Um, I originally contacted Jim on behalf of people on the street, so I was, I've been sort of compiling different ideas, things people have been talking about. Now many of us are here, so I don't want to hog the podium when other people are going to talk about some things I might be talking about. But I just wanted to quickly go over our key points and why we were concerned about Wilder Place, and, and other people, when you come up, can fill in anything I might have left, left out. Um, I think our biggest concern on Wilder Place is, is a public safety issue. It's a, a narrow street, and it connects directly from Main Street in Florence to the bike trail. It's um, one of the only one of those short streets that connects the bike trail and Main Street that actually provides direct access. You can drive down our street and drive right onto the bike trail if you wanted to. It's totally open there. And what that's done, it's actually a good thing for us on the street. It's a, it's a very popular walking route for people. Um, the street is often filled with kids on bikes and people walking pets and older people and people just accessing downtown Florence from the bike trail. Um, but as you've noticed, it's a narrow street and the sight lines on the street are difficult. Um, the, the frontages in front of each house are narrow and our driveways are all short and tight. And it can be very hard to back out of a driveway um, into the street. And for those of us who live there, we're, we're used to and we sort of know what to look for. But the street is also a cul-de-sac and so people who park on the street have to turn around somewhere. and we've found that they're, they're not obviously not as familiar with the qualities of the, the characteristics of the street as we are and it's hard enough to turn on in a driveway when you live there and be watching for kids and, and people with pets and so on and it it's a bigger issue i think for people that aren't familiar and who are parking on the street and turning around on the street um, that issue is made worse because of it is a short street and people when they park there a lot tend to park very close to our driveways. They, I think there might be a three foot area. They, they should not park within three feet of a driveway, but they often park right up at the edge of the driveway or sometimes even a little bit over the edge of the driveway. And it makes it very hard to turn around in these, in these sort of tight little driveways that we have. Um, there's also a, a fire hydrant at the end of the street that's sometimes blocked when there are a lot of people parking on the street. And, and because the street's narrow, as you've noticed, um, when people park on both sides of the street, which happens at sort of the most congested times, it's very hard to get cars up and down the street. Um, it's impossible to get like UPS trucks or garbage trucks or um, emergency vehicles down the street when people are parked on both sides. Um, last week, there was only parking on one side, but an ambulance came to one of our neighbor's houses and was there for a half an hour or so. And during the time the ambulance was there with cars parked on the other street, you couldn't pass down the street at all. The street was totally blocked. Um, and so those are those are the key issues, the things I think we've been most concerned about um, in the street, the street the way it is now. Um, I know that you're looking at the street with the possibility of putting parking only on one side, but we also want to just raise the possibility of possibly having a resident only parking street. I don't know if there is such a thing in Northampton. But given the, the heavy pedestrian traffic and the sort of narrowness and smallness of the street, if it could be designated as just a place where only residents can park, that would be great for us. I know it's just I'm talking about our concerns, not the city's concerns, but um, we would like that. Um, we also really appreciate the fact that you're considering parking on one side only. And if that were the route you went, we, we 
wanted to ask if it could be time limited parking, like two hour parking only. The reason for that is the street is often used for all day parking by some businesses in the area whose employees park there and one business, very nice people, but they often leave their trucks on our street all day. And we feel if it was designated to our parking, it would eliminate the possibility of people just leaving their cars there all day. I think that's the key points. So thank you. Anybody else? The one thing about the parking. Name and Andrew. Oh, I'm sorry. Kate Miller and 15 Wilder Place. Um, one of the things about um, parking, people parking too close to our driveways, and sometimes they park right up to the driveway. And another proposal that I would like to put in is if we had painted designated spots so that we definitely have that clearance for public safety and um, visibility on our streets so that we, we have the capability of turning in our own driveways, okay, without having to narrowly miss, especially when there's a big pickup truck on either end, then you're like going, whoa, like that, and if it's like close to our driveways, it's really hard, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh. Hello, I'm Tim Bersalati, and my wife and son and I live at 23 Wilder Place. I'd like to also point out that in the winter time, there is a business that sometimes leaves its trucks parked on our street during snow emergencies. And they don't get towed. The plow just goes around them, leaving a mound of snow that hardens into ice. Um, and so this is a year-round issue. Uh, I would ask that whatever solution you come up with, that there would also be enforcement to get the message out, because this is a habit that's built up over years, and I think it's going to take a while for the people who work nearby or who patronize the businesses nearby to get used to the parking scheme, uh, if there is one on Wilder Place. Uh, that was a thank you again for taking up the issue. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Yes. My name is Kate Simmons, and I live at 11 Wilder Place, and Mostly I have comments. One of them is, actually I'm looking at this picture right here and I can see that truck parked at the end of the street. That's right in front of the fire hydrant. And there's actually another fire hydrant on that street, which I was just informed about, living there for 17 years. I've never noticed it because it's up outside of Cooper's and it's in the hedge. So you can't even see it. So why they're not marked and why they're not visible, I don't know. And I actually have a question about my house, which is the first one on the street on the right hand side. And I have a hedge in front of my house and there's a little opening with a walkway in front. And I actually put a pylon in front of that so that I can keep that walkway open because otherwise there's cars and or trucks parked right in the middle and I can't get out. And I mostly walk or ride my bike. I don't use my car that much. So I wonder if that's legal to park in front of an access, walking access like that. Um, just a question. Um, yeah, that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Dave Virgin, Grand 19 Wilder Place. Uh, most, most things we covered, I'd just like to amplify a couple of things and add one new thing. Um, we've been there for just under 22 years, and really it wasn't until several years ago. I don't want to pick on anybody, but when the construction company moved into the Cooper's Corner building, things changed. And they have the trucks, they have vehicles, as Scott's, they're nice people. And I talked to them once because they blocked the, they blocked our, our walkway, we can't put the garbage, yeah, the garbage cans out. Like that. They quit doing that with the trucks, but they also have regular vehicles that some of the some of the office staff to use. So they're taking up most of the street right there. And, and it, it's, a, it's a major problem from all the ways that have been discussed already. Um, I would like to suggest that if you do go to one side of the street, I'm sure you'll wind up with our side of the street. I'm the third house up on the right. I'm sure you'll wind up taking the right probably because that's probably the logical way. But what I'd like to suggest that you don't, uh, Kate and I actually, this Kate, there's two Kates, we actually <laughs> measured in front of each house a few weeks ago. 
There really isn't room for more than one vehicle per lot. Not really. Now, if you're going to leave a full three foot and a little bit of space between the, the, the cars, we measure the car, measure the trucks are maybe a little bit longer. So there's really only re room for one space per lot. So if, if you do wind up put, putting a one side of the street and marked parking, and, and hopefully restricted time parking, then hopefully there won't be more than one spot per lot. Uh, and I'd like to add one other thing, and I don't want to divert from this because this is our main reason we're here is Wilder Place. But if you look at the very front where, the, where Main Street hits, I just dealt with this, I dealt with it almost every day, I go out of there. Main Street hits Wilder Place, to the, just to the left there, just below the brown roof. There's, it's my understanding that the, the, the town has a, has a restriction of 20 feet or something like that between an intersection and parking. If there is parking within about three or four feet of that intersection to our left, if you're looking at the picture, and when you come out of Wilder Place, and especially when one of those trucks is there, which is very often, you can't see to the right at all. Not at all. So you have to inch out with traffic coming both ways. Take, take your chances with whoever's coming this way, mm -hmm. they don't hit you, because you can't see mm -hmm. at all. So there's a parking place there that really shouldn't be there, as far as I'm concerned. Sorry. And just to be clear, you're talking about a parking spot oh, on that's Main, Main Street. Street. Yeah. It's on Main Street. And it's near to the entrance to, to Wilder. Wilder Place. It's right, it, right to the left, toward, yeah, right toward right. the new Cumberland Farm. With a red car. Right. Right. With a little red car right, right in the corner. It, I, I, just, I just came out today, the same thing on the way here today. I cannot see to the right. I don't worry about my wife coming out there every day and early in the morning. There's a lot of traffic. There's a ton of traffic. So you have to inch out, inch out, inch out. Sometimes depend on somebody not to hit you from the left and to stop. But no, you can't see to the right at all. So the parking spot starts about three or four feet from Wilder Place. And I don't, I don't believe that's, I don't think that's in your regs, frankly. I, I was under the understanding that it was supposed to be like a 20 foot buffer with an intersection. Well, there is on the other side. Uh, so we're, so thank you very much for really helping. I, I would love the resident only thing. Uh, we have already been hinted that we're not going to get that, but that would be wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank and you for the back. I'm back. Um, I just really want to second what David said because it's, it is really difficult every single time you um, want to go out our street. Um, that you, you do, you really have to inch and inch and inch out to be able to see. And sometimes when you're inching so far, then the people on the left, you have to inch way out. And then traffic that keeps on going, it's sort of like, you know, this. And it's, it's a very difficult spot to get out into the main street. Thank you. Anybody else? Wilder oh, Place. Yes, <laughs> okay. Um, so um, I, I guess that Maggie's working on this. And uh, oh, go ahead. I have a couple comments. Sure. Um, so the street is about 22 feet wide. A typical parking spot is eight feet. Mm -hmm. So if we do some math. We always we, we like to see an 11 foot travel lane. So if you have parking on both sides, that's eight feet plus eight feet minus the 22 feet. So you can do math and see that we don't really have an appropriate travel lane if parking is on both sides. If you restrict parking to one side, you then have the complicating factor of the people on the side of the road with no parking trying to back out of their driveways and we run into this on other city streets as well. I think there's a couple of them on the agenda, actually. So that's something that needs to be considered as well. So there's at this point, there's nothing more that DPW can do other than to give the commission these measurements, say what a standard travel lane should be, and then I think it's a, a discussion among this commission about how we are going to proceed on this particular road given the data the DPW has come up with. Okay. I, and the thing is, I, I believe we 
didn't we discuss this in June? And so I, so the I, I, I think we've already. You, it's already kind of in DPW's court, and that this is additional information. Um, but do do I have that right? Well, I think this is a this is not a DPW decision mm -hmm. because DPW is not in a position to make a decision on this. We're we're in a position to say, here's the data, here's what we recommend for right. a travel lane, here's what's a typical park space width, and now here we have this road where these conditions are what they are, and the commission needs to evaluate that data, but the DPW can't create a policy for, for this road. Donna, if we recommended parking on one side of the street, are you guys in a position to recommend which side of the street that should be on? Yes, we can certainly make an engineering determination about that, but the consideration for that needs to be where are the driveways, and when the people are trying to back out of their driveways, what's the radius they need to yeah. make that, that safe turn, and then you're pretty, you know, you create an ordinance that says, okay, you know, we're restricting parking to the easterly side or the westerly side or whatever it is. You're also looking at the potential of creating an ordinance to restrict parking in certain locations so that people can actually yeah. back out of their driveway. I hear that. I guess from my standpoint, we have a lot of streets in the city that are 22 feet wide, yeah. and it certainly can be difficult, but it could work. So I guess for, and I'm also by nature incrementalist. So I'm sort of inclined to say we should go to parking on one side. That makes it better than it is now. I, I hear all the limits to it, and then let's test it. And I, you know, the residents only parking the sort of longer solutions. I'd be nervous doing with that a much more comprehensive parking site for Florence. So you know. If people who are parking there can't park there, they're going to go somewhere else. So we want to do that without understanding. It doesn't mean we wouldn't come back and revisit this. It seems like we could move this along and do one side and solve the problem, but I have no idea which side it is. It's the less bad. And, and that's so. fine. We can, we can provide an engineering recommendation that says we think it makes the most sense to park on you know, the even side of the road you know, for these two yeah. reasons. We can certainly do that if directed to do so. Can I just want to have you guys looked at or can you look at that one spot they were talking about on Main Street? Yes, we can take a look at it. I mean, there's always anomalies like this yeah. throughout the city, certainly in the interest of parking spaces, but never to compromise safety. So that's certainly something. Okay. Um, I was also going to ask if you could look at that Main Street spot. Um, would, is this a situation where we could maybe designate what this? where the spots would be, which, in which case we should, could also take into account the driveways and maybe designate spots on one side that allow for people to back out of their driveways. We could. We can, we can take this back and look at it and make a, you know, an engineering determination about where it most, makes most sense to put cars. Okay. We can absolutely do that and bring it back to the commission. And while you're doing all that, can we look at the fire hydrants and just see if they need extra signage. Yeah, and we don't typically put signs up at fire hydrants. I mean, it's sort of like a, you know, common knowledge, but right? people are actively blocking yeah. fire hydrants. Um, they are blocking that one might be something by Cooper's, yeah. definitely. So, would somebody like to make a motion the, the reason, I, I thought we had already dealt with this matter in last time we met, but I guess it wouldn't hurt to make another motion to, um, uh, yeah, what are you framing? Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, how about we uh, move to have the DPW do a little, do some more research on um, which side of the street makes the most sense, and uh, the possibility of designating the spots on that street, and some of the other things that we uh, we discussed, like main like that main street spot and checking out the fire hydrants. That's a good motion. Would you like to <laughs> second it? I'm the chair. Let's have somebody else second it. All right. 
And uh, any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, any abstentions? Any no's? All right, it passes unanimously. And um, we'll keep you updated on how it's progressing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a date for the next meeting yet or no? It's, okay. don't remember it off the top. It's the third Tuesday of the month at, at 4 o'clock. Okay. So, um, as the chair, I'm now I'm going to move Grove Avenue up to um, the next item here. And, um, and GL, if you can find it, we got, well, we actually got a very extensive um, proposal from one of the uh, residents on the street, and it was Linda, right? Yes. Yeah. Do you want to, would you like to come up and speak to that? Sure. I'm Linda Butler from 74 Grove Ave in Leeds. I was here in June um, with a request um, on behalf of my neighbor, Deb Jacobs, from 82. Uh, both of us have short, narrow driveways. Grove Ave is only 20 feet wide, and we have difficulty backing out of our short, narrow driveways when there are people parked directly across the street. Um, I have since then learned that there's a, a city regulation for when you're planning parking off street that 18 feet is the recommended area for maneuverability behind a parking space. And, you know, so, if we're going to have 18 feet of maneuverability, we can't have a car of any size there. A motorcycle, okay. Um, we have a lot of the same issues that Wilder Place does with having access to the woods and the bike path at the end of the street. Um, a lot of people come to use the river to walk their dogs. Sometimes they arrive in caravans of three or four cars. And um, the habit now is for people to park on the the right side as you're facing the dead end. Um, that's the east side. And uh, so that's one reason that we would recommend that parking be limited to that side. Another reason is that on the west side, the drivers are short and flat. On the east side, they're a little longer and they, they come down to the street. So there's more visibility for the drivers if there are cars parked on either side of the driveway than we would have um, on our side. Um, and also when those cars come in caravans, it's much easier for them to just pull over and then as they leave at different times to, to turn around as opposed to everybody coming and turning around and having to park on the west side. Um, what am I forgetting? Hydrants are on the front. Yeah, well, yeah, there's a hydrant at the end. Um, and so the, the red zones there are places that there are existing regulations where people shouldn't be parking, like around a hydrant, within three feet of the driveway, um, within 20 feet of the corner, I think it is. And so now that we're aware of that, people on the street can call and get you know, enforcement of those existing regulations. But that doesn't help as far as Deb and me getting out of our driveways, particularly in the winter when the snow banks make the street even narrower. Um, so our request is to have designated parking spaces so that the parking is clearly um, directed to just that right-hand side of the street, and so that there's nobody parking opposite the short, narrow driveways, and those with the little green numbered um, spots are. Um, but I'm not an engineer, and I know that DPW would have their own opinions about this. Um, any questions? Yes, one question. So, as I understand this, so the last house on row, she parks across the street. Yes. Isn't that marked red in your plan to that would eliminate her ability to park there or am I misunderstanding? No, 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 no. We're we're marking the street red so that nobody parks on the street blocking her access to that off street parking. Okay. I don't I know she's been parking there forever, but I think that's actually privately owned. It is. So her, the owner, um, Bucky Sparkle and Amy have had a conversation about this, and he is fine with her continuing to park there. Okay. And and since I was here in June, also um, I've been in touch with all of my neighbors and all of the households on the 
the dead end, and uh, seven of the households are represented at a meeting on my front porch, and everybody else has been um, kept informed via email or face-to-face -face conversations or printed copies of emails that have gone around among the people who have computers. Um, so, uh, and I copied everybody when I sent this in to you, so you know that everybody's on board, and Elisa Klein was there at the meeting. Yeah, I have to say your proposal is really impressive. And also that my recommendation to you at the at the meeting is well, talk to your counselor, talk to people on the street, and then we get a oh, boom, this, you know, this four page, you know, well detailed plan and um, so I want to thank you for it. I didn't want to have to come back again. <laughs> well <laughs> I might still <laughs> Well, um so this like the previous um uh, street that we were looking at needs to be discussed by the commission. So, um, did you have anything you wanted to add? Before? Oh yeah. That Jacob stage you grow out weeds. I just wanted to add um, the other thing about the east and west sides is the the west side has a curb. The east side does not, and so we think the road is only 19 inches because. There's a lot of soil that's gone down into the road, and um, it, when, when we measure, I mean, we obviously aren't as accurate as, as DBW, but um, it's, 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 it's a challenge. Um, and I, I, I appreciate your, your opinion. It's a lot of it. It seems like they have blue all over again from the um, previous um, people, because I know there are a lot of streets. In the winter it's also a problem because people will leave their cars to go cross country skiing in the woods even when it's, you know, it will be snowing out and they're not very receptive when you ask them not to leave their cars there. And that's a problem getting getting um, uh, snow and ice removal. So thank you. Thank you. So the only thing I would add, you know, if, if it's Gina's mo exactly the same motion Gina made before, I'd make here. But the only thing I'd add is there's also vegetation that's growing out of the street. And so I think it means that people are probably parking further away from the curb and into the road than they might otherwise do. It. So if you guys are looking at that, we'll take a look at that as well. Yeah, I mean, this is a very similar request to what we just discussed for Wilder Place. Um, you know, the painted spaces become a maintenance item for the city. Um, they, there aren't any other dead end streets that I'm aware of that, that have marked spaces. Um, but in this particular case, it's, it's certainly something for discussion. Um, you know, I don't know what sort of I call a lot of signs like visual clutter. You know, you start putting up no parking signs and then, you know, people just ignore them because there's all these signs everywhere. Um, so something we could do is strike the ground where no parking, or where parking is not permitted. And we were putting the sign up. And again, these are pavement markings which require maintenance. So it's, it's something that the city is assuming now is the maintenance. Is maintenance easier on no parking striping than, par I mean, it seems like a silly question, but. Hey, I mean, any pavement marking needs to be maintained. Right. And, and so, you know, one of the things I just talked about is our line striping contract. You know, we pay tens of thousands of dollars to restrike city roadways every year because once you put something on the earth, it needs to be. Do we think that these smaller dead end streets that have less traffic, maybe they would need to be maintained less often? They may, but you're, I mean, you're still going to run snowplow and you're still going to have vehicular traffic, so they they are going to wear. And I'm not saying that that's a reason to not do it. It's just a no. It's a consideration. It, it's just a consideration. Yeah. So if we look at what we're doing for Wilder Place and you sort of take this on a case by case basis. One of the things that we should consider is do we just restrict parking to one side of the street and not strike, or do you restrict it and strike simultaneously? It's a 
maybe it's the same incremental. Maybe we start with one side of the street and come back a year later to see if we get another step. Well, and there's also this, the similarity is that both uh, end on a bike path, that, um, that that's part of the, what's going on here is that people are parking on, uh, on Grove and they aren't familiar with the parking arrangement that most of the neighbors would be familiar with. Oh, I need to inch this way so Deb can get out of her driveway. And, um, and people are accessing the, the bike trail from there. And, um, and I think similar things are going on at the end of that other street as well, because it backs up right on the bike path. Um, so it. I would just say that these are, I mean, these are universal rules, right? You are always supposed to leave three feet before our driveway, and it doesn't matter whether it's a Wilder Place or here or State Street. It's just the way it is. Right. It, that we're, we're going to have our universal regulations for, on how to do things, but in terms of stepping things up incrementally, that this is that both of these locations that are having far more visitors than your typical dead end residential street because they're near a commercial spot or they're near some sort of attraction, a recreational attraction. And um, so, anyway. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to point out that, um, that it's also a straight shot down Grove Ave to the elementary school and kids go past, walk past the mansion and one of the things when the rail trail was put in that Wayne um, wanted to see and, and had happened was there is an entrance from the um, Beaver Brook development that goes down to the rail trail and I know of at least one family that uses that to walk straight down to the school. So twice a day we have a lot of school children that are going. Um, the other thing about the vegetation, one of the reasons why some of us have let that grow up is for traffic calming, because people drive way too fast. And I can tell you people park right in under um, Nisa's uh, Forsythia, even though it's coming down they park right right in there. It doesn't it doesn't make them park further out onto the street. Thank you. Okay. There are no sidewalks here, so people right. run along this All right. Would somebody like to make a motion? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Why do you think you should have a park on one side? I guess the question is that comment is it worth doing a space marking now or is it worth waiting? Sure, the right answer. May I respond to that? The problem that brought us here originally was that we can't get out of our driveways, and so if people are parked on the one side only, but it's right opposite our driveways, you know, we, we just we don't have the clearance to get out, particularly in the winter. Right. So we don't really need the wait and see period because we know what we've been through since the new houses have gone in and the bike path has gone in, it's just become worse and worse problem. Well, don't we need to refer it to the DPW for recommendations? Is this not clear? Well, what we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to make a motion to send it over to DPW for them to come up with a plan to bring back the Be Before we review this further, if, if this permission were to say yes, we think it's a great idea to mark these parking spaces, what is the enforceability of that? I mean, if we, we put parking space here and someone doesn't park in it, or parks three feet over it, what is, what is that? What does that look like in terms of enforcement? Um, there is an ordinance that requires that if it's a marked space, that the car park fully within the marked space. Otherwise, enforcement comes out and tickets the car. Well, that's in Leeds. Yeah. <laughs> it could be called in. The, it would have the owners would probably be on the residents to call in. 
Right, the PD would, would have to be called in. Um, that is not one of the areas that parks enforcement goes. Can I ask a question? Are there certain times when it's worse? Like, you know, gorgeous summer weekends? Summer weekends, uh, good snow days, um, early morning when people are walking, do groups of dog walkers come, and that's every day while you're yeah, around. Yeah, okay, all right. I think PD is already swinging by during the time when people are creating a lot of problems at um, the Orange Dam, and they could look at the same time, but it sounds like it's a more extensive problem than just those times. I would say that I, I think we're all in agreement to explore the parking on one side of the street. The, the um, concern is the, the, the sticking point is the line striping. And um, maybe it might be best if we ask DPW to go out. When they're assessing the situation, they can look at what's on the ground and maybe um, with the line striping in mind, come back with a recommendation. How's that? Nancy? I, I appreciate that it's it's definitely a uh, maintenance uh, concern. Um, however, when we did the line striping on Middle Street, for those of you who remember the, the Middle Street situation, um, parking on top of driveways, um, parking within the 20 feet of an intersection, that stopped it cold by putting the markings on the street. And I can't frankly remember the last time that we received a complaint about people parking on top of driveways. Interesting. If you um, paint the white lines for designated parking spots, do you also have to paint no parking zones in the areas that you don't? The, the situation that happened on um, Middle Street, for example, because this was a um, real contentious um, situation, there, um, was that by designating where people could park as opposed to where you can't park, it really narrowed the scope. A person had uh, a visual of where they can park. Um, and then there was no question. You can park within these lines. You must park within these lines. And these lines are not on top of people's driveways. So a question, is line striping designating parking uh, more cost effective than line striping uh, no parking zones? I would say creating, I mean, the less paint we can put on the ground, <laughs> the less maintenance there is associated with it. And again, it's it's not a cost factor, it's more it's more of sort of a policy decision about how we are going to move through roads like this that don't have parking spaces marked on them and, and are we now going to create parking spaces and pavement markings where there previously have not been any what is that going to look like throughout the city? Do, do we have a sense that, like, that's sort of my hesitation with pavement is, if you say, if we do this, there's 50 streets that are like it, that scares me. If your argument that there are relatively few things that are next to a town center or bike path, you know, if this is one of five things, then it's a worthwhile cost. It's one of 50, we need more accommodation. Do we have any sense of that? I think there are, I think there are plenty of roads like this throughout the city that may or may not abut, you know, conservation land or recreation path, yeah. you know, that are narrow where parking is problematic and, and this is this is one of them. But I, I think there are plenty throughout the city that fit this bill. What made Middle Street qualify for parking spaces? Um, 
when the, uh, the mills, the old mills, were turned into office space, uh, it, and there wasn't a big enough parking lot, it overflowed onto the surrounding streets, in particular Middle Street, and also people were staying there all day long. Um, so it became a limited amount of time and the, uh, the, the parking spaces because of the overflow uh -huh. and the impact that was having on the, on the street. And I recently walked that area with Councillor Murphy, and he was pointing to it how it really alleviated a lot of the concerns that you were talking about. So, um, of course, I would say Pat would drive still on the businesses away from those had an effect too. True, true. Of course, what's the uh, paving condition like out there? I don't know. I don't know. Do you have an idea of the pavement condition? Is it potholy? Is it are there puddles? Is the pavement relatively smooth? Yeah. It's, it's just well, the pavement. It, is well, we just had two houses put in, so the street down um, by my house, there are a couple of places where the contractor had to rip up the road to um, for uh, water and sewer. Yeah. Um, so that's not that's kind of flimsy. Um, uh, water comes down um, evergreen and then comes down grove. So um, the storm drains at the end of the street get a lot of work out. And with these new houses, there's a lot of, it almost looks like beachfront property with um, all the erosion that, that's come down. Um, I'm, our street isn't as, as bad as a lot of them, but yeah, grow back, grow back is actually I just look that's on our reclaim list, which means it's what we consider as being poor enough condition. Right. Yeah, I, I was just thinking that the surface condition would it'd be problematic to paint the road to falling apart. Well, yeah, I mean I don't know specifically if it's actually crumbling or if it's I don't undermined it's the but even so I I would wait until those houses at the end have paved their driveway and done some landscaping before you put paint down because with all the, the mud that's washing down into the road all the time. Mm. And the side of the road, the east side of the road, down at, down where I am is, um, is pieces of it are, are crumbling off. The side, the side I live on, the west side, because of the curb, that's protected, um, protected it somewhat. Councilor Shaker. Donna, um, I know this is a tough question, but do you know where on the list it is or any sense of when it? Um, it won't be paved this year. Um, in that case, I mean, I guess I would, what I would move to do is to restrict parking to one side and revisit this when it's, when that gets repaved. And if there's still a significant problem, we would be ripping up that painting anyway. So we uh, can look at it when it's got a nice new growth that could be painted. Is it a difficult question to answer or is it dead end? Or <laughs> is it dead end that needs to be repaired? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, by making, by saying that, I'm not saying that it, that should put pressure on getting, uh, getting onto the list. But I, I, I think it would, what I would say is, in order to paint parking spaces, parking needs to be restricted to one side or the other anyway. So, so the first step is that an ordinance would need to be drafted to restrict parking to whatever side makes the most sense to restrict the parking to. So that would be the first step. The the pavement markings, I'm not as I'm not concerned about the cost of the paint. But I'm, I'm concerned more about the maintenance of it and the sort of philosophical question about it, are we going to start straightening up many roads throughout the city where very similar problems exist. So my motion is to ask the DPW to drop an ordinance to restrict parking to 
one side, it looks like there's a kind of a clear side, which it should be. Um, but you could use your discretion if you, if you think that's Yeah, we need to make an engineering determination, right? To determine what the best side is, but we certainly take everyone's opinion. And, and how would you indicate to people where they can and can't park if there aren't going to be parking spaces shown? So parking spaces aren't necessarily codified by ordinance. Uh -huh. In this case, it's just you can't park on the side of the street. So will there be signs all the way down one side saying you can park here and signs on the other side saying don't park this side? We, we don't put up signs saying you can park here. We put up signs that say you can't park here. Uh -huh. How many of them do there have to be? I, I, I'm asking because the neighbors were really very much opposed to the idea of more signage. Um, typically, we go 70 feet apart. I don't know how long this is. I mean, there would probably have to be no parking signs, regardless of whether they're spot striped. So that's just has that has to happen if there's no parking. Yeah, I mean, my there's, if there's an ordinance, we need to communicate to people that there is an ordinance and there is no parking that's allowed here because otherwise people wouldn't know. Well, well my proposal was is that, yeah, that there would be a park in designated spots only sign on the sign where the um, Evergreen Road sign is and the dead end sign is. So there would be just one additional sign on that, that existing pole. And that, as you said about Middle Street, people see where you're supposed to park and the message is you're not supposed to park where it's not designated so, so we were hoping i to think avoid. We, we have you made a motion right yeah and did we get a second oh, sorry. all right so now now we can discuss <laughs> um and um so i you know i i i'm kind of partial to the idea of trying out the, the line striping in this location because it's been so contentious around um, and that, you know, the, the issue of outsiders coming in and parking and not quite knowing where to go, that I think it might be helpful. I, I think just for clarification's sake, on Middle Street, one side of it is designated no parking. So there are signs on one side of the street that say no parking, parking prohibited. You can't um, enforce no parking unless it's signed as no parking. Right. Uh -huh. the, the lines, what the lines do is it designates on the side where parking is allowed. It gives people a visual as to where they can park so that they don't encroach upon their driveways. Uh -huh. How do I add my idea to your motion? Do we? I can't. Okay. You can vote so, down my motion. So we can vote down your motion. So let's let's do this. Let's um let's put your motion on up for vote. Is people okay with that? And guys, I mean, regardless of painting or not, you still want parking only on one side of the street. Right. So in some ways, it might be let's let's vote on this motion and support parking on one side, and then if you want a second motion, that could also be the one. Because no matter what, okay. no one wants parking on both sides of the street. And that, so that makes sense. Thank you. <laughs> so let's deal with the motion, Gio's motion, to uh, explore parking on one side of the street for Gro uh, Grove Avenue. Um, all in favor? Uh, so I'm closing the discussion. People okay with that? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, and so I would like to make a motion now uh, to uh, also uh, do some line painting on uh, Grove Avenue to um, uh, to de to designate where the parking is, and so that's my motion. Somebody in a second. Well, what about the idea of asking DPW to? back with their opinion of that after looking. I'd be comfortable with that and I'd withdraw my motion. Does that require a motion? Can you just do it? 
we can do an engineering assessment of, of anything the commission asks of us, provided we're all so in agreement. I can amend my motion, right? Uh, you can amend your motion. Yeah, so I'd like to amend it to re request that DPW explore uh, li uh, line striping to designate parking. Second. Thank you. <laughs> Any more discussion? Uh, all in. So, wait, so just to be clear, so that means that the DPW will come back and tell us what you found with your engineering study and then before we would go forward with that. Right. That is correct. We will offer our opinion if, and it's just our opinion of if this makes sense and if it does make sense where we would recommend the parking spaces to go in order to make them compliant parking spaces that don't interfere with the flow of traffic in and out of driveways or the flow of traffic down through the traffic way. So it's, a, it's a not quite as simple as we're just gonna strike the road. I mean, we have to take very precise measurements and determine the exact location of where these spots can go and can't go. That's why Maggie's not smiling. <laughs> <laughs> but wouldn't you be doing that anyway when we're just designating one side of the street for parking and if we draft an ordinance to restrict parking to one side of the street, no, we don't. Because okay. all we're doing is installing no parking signs to communicate that that ordinance has passed. We're not actually designating here's a parking spot gotcha. that can park in that, that has these dimensions associated in this particular place. Okay. Uh, any more discussion? So. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any no's? No. Okay. Any abstentions? Okay, so we've got one no, and how many, or how many yeses was it? Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Um, Next on the agenda here. Oh, I got Fruit Street. Fruit Street, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So we have a number of things I'm expecting to go more quickly. Here. All right. Fruit Street. Um, that. So with our agenda, thank you, Tim. Um, that um, that it got mixed up a little bit with our June agenda. So you'll, you're seeing things that involved it. Didn't we already talk about this? Uh, this was one of the things that was not quite resolved, uh, which was closing the Fruit Street uh, traffic calming application, and we're waiting for some more information again on line striping that was uh, discussed in the June meeting, and I was hoping to, if we could get an update on that. Um, but I noticed that Dave's not, Dave's not here today. Is that who that would be coming from? So I'm going to. If you designate to actually do, who was going to do the striping on that? Was it going to be? Well, we had discussed that 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 um, that, um, that uh, we we learned that um, that I believe uh, that the parking department had discussed line striping on Fruit Street and it, it being a possibility. But we didn't have uh, confirmation that that was actually going to happen, and that actually held up the vote on closing the Fruit Street traffic calming application. Yeah, I mean there there is no, and and this is sort of like the other two things we just talked about. I mean DPW doesn't really have an opinion about if if parking spots should be striped on this particular roadway, so it's just a question of. Does this commission feel that this is a place where we should install parking spaces? Like actually straight up. But it's not a, a DPW determination. Right. I always get crossed up between determination and whether we actually and authority and money. And so um, and I think that's where I, I'm getting crossed up here is because 
the parking department had talked about possibly having the money and was looking into doing this and that um, that I it's not directly attached to the traffic calming application as you're pointing out but I think it was important before we close it that we knew that you know we really looked at the whole matter and so Wayne well, this may be a sidebar but just one of the you obviously mark street mark if someone's going to mark painted lines it's you guys but within the central business district there's is that you or is that brian who does that uh, a lot of times it's brian okay but fruit street would be you guys and not him yeah that's the central business district right on the edge mm -hmm. with no meters but that's why i wasn't sure who does that but. yeah okay i mean we we work together but primarily that's the okay if I'm remembering correctly, um, Dave was talking about um, that the funding for the project. Okay, yep. Dave Pomerantz had agreed to look further into the issue of where the funding was going to come from and whether it was going to come out of parking maintenance funds. Okay, so what, I'll put that off till next month and Dave will provide us with an answer and then we can formally address that Fruit Street traffic on the application. Does that sound good? All right. Um, item C, Pine Street in Maine. You know what? We voted on this and we closed it. Great. So we can move on. Uh, crosswalk at Live 155. Uh, this was a, a, a topic that um, Chief Casper wanted to talk about and um, I believe she talked about it at the last meeting and um, Director Lascali was gonna look into this matter, but also it's kind of like Wayne's project with the, the crosswalk there. So um, that... So we asked Steve Clark, the mission engineer, who's the one who designed it. Right. And he said it meets the manual of uniform traffic control devices and people should be yielding. Jody's concern, if she's right, is people aren't yielding, and so I'm not sure what that means. Right. With, with, with this enforcement channel, so I, I don't know much more wisdom, but it does it does meet the standards. For people in cars should be yielding. Okay. And um, all right. Are there is there anything? I again, I think we probably should push push this off until Chief Casper is here as well, so we can fully have the discussion are people comfortable with that or is there any reason we should talk about it now by the next month Pleasant Street should be repaved and they'll be painting and will painting be going on on that intersection will it be all along Pleasant Street where it's going to be okay so but, it's but, not, but not the actual crosswalk not okay. that okay. race okay. intersection okay. or any of the other race it would be the center lines and the parking. Excellent. And, and just from my standpoint, I mean, I, I'm certainly not objecting to a more aggressive treatment. I mean, the current treatment is legal, but if it's a need something more, that's fine. The only thing that's important is the diagonal movement to be allowed because that's what bicycles are doing. Right. Like that, that. So as long as we accommodate that, I'm not, I don't object to something better. I mean, the entire point of that race intersection is that you're allowed to cross anywhere by putting in the ladder markings on the sides. But if we just sort of mark the entire space, it's would that hard. be more clear to people that they need to stop before it? I mean, because the problem is that people just, they don't really know what they're looking at, and so they kind of get on it. And I don't think Steve had recommended putting markings on top of the brick. Maybe you get a lot of signage. I mean, we could look at putting potassium paddles there, but those will likely get wiped out pretty quickly. You know, it's narrow through there, and you get heavy truck traffic, and the thing gets knocked over, and that's more of a hazard than anything. Right. Okay. Um, okay, so we'll continue this discussion next month, and. Um, now we're on to Vernon Street, and um, it, again, I think this is something that we did address back in June, and um, is, is that correct, Beth? Did we? 
I mean, does that sound right to DPW that we address this in June? We kind of yes. You asked us to to reassess proposed parking restrictions using current criteria for that fact, like, like you know, fire hydrant intersection. Right. Okay. Good. We did that. All right. Yes. So, so we that did. Uh, we did reassess that. Um, and oh, you have something to report out. Yeah. What What we need to do is is install a no parking to the corner sign mm -hmm. um and you know I, I i guess what i would say is if the issue comes up again this week there we'll take another look at it but just make sure that intersection is clear so your recommendation right because with the 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 initial proposal uh was looking at a length of the street and so you're coming back with just simply restricting parking near the the opening here. Yeah, I think that you've got a hydrant and you've mm -hmm. got the intersection. Right. And you've, you've got kind of possibly a confusing gap to people here. So right. we have a sign that says no parking here at a corner. I think that would clear up for people where they can. Don, that's just to inform people. Right? Legally, you can't park within 20 feet anyway. Correct. Right. Right. It's just more of a. Yeah. I think it's just a, a little confusing. Okay. So, do we have a draft ordinance for this, or? We do. Under yeah. the general prohibition, you know, within 20 feet. Oh, so we don't need yeah. to yeah. draft it. We just yeah. need to put a sign up. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to put a sign up. Awesome. Oh, cool. So you don't even need to do anything. We're just going to sign up. <laughs> nice. Okay, so hopefully they all go like this. All right. Now we're on to um, North Farms update. That was, um, you know, is there anybody here who'd like to speak for North Farms? No. Uh, that um, that was erroneously put on this agenda. Um, and we continue to talk about how to approach that. Um, Nonatuck and Federal Street. Again, that was a holdover from the, the June agenda, but I think it's worth repeating all of the things that are going on there. There's the line striping at uh, Nonatuck and Federal. There's the completion of Hinkley Street. And, um, and those, um, uh, Director Lascalia, the, the speed humps, that everybody's been complaining about, those are uh, going to be redone? They're going to be milled and replaced with speed tables a la Florence Road. So they will have less of a severe deflection, but there will still be a, a physical modification to the roadway mm -hmm. that will slow traffic, but with less deflection than currently exists. Excellent. And that's, that's still on target to happen in this building season. Yes. Yes. The same contractor who's doing the work downtown will mobilize that location. So the, the Hampton out, right out, oh, down, okay. Pleasant Street contractor will be moving that direction. Thank you. Um, a dare place. Uh, we actually dealt with that, and that is at legislative matters and moving forward. Um, uh, Seventy-one Union Street. Um, this one is per, um, we, we requested in June for uh, DPW to propose a, a, uh, a limited time parking um, area just outside of Bridge Street School, um, allowing parents for, to do pick up and drop off. Um, Blue area? There's another. Okay. Oh, we'll talk in the meantime. Yeah, so um, this, um, you know, what's interesting, I, I, I even got a, a request for just this about two weeks ago from a parent who uh, had parked um, and blocked a driveway. Have we heard that today? And they got a ticket, but it was during while they're trying to pick up and, uh, their child uh, uh, 
who had some sort of a doctor's appointment and that um, that the Bridge Street parking lot is completely full with faculty cars and so this is really an ideal location for parents during the day to be able to do those uh, those quick trips into the school to, to bring in a lunch that was forgotten, homework, pick up a child. Um, so, um, oh, do we have it up now? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Maggie, or would you guys like to talk about this? So it would be creating a 15 minute zone on Union Street, 135 feet southwest of the Parsons to a point, 160 feet southwest of the parking space, and that would fit one vehicle. One vehicle. Just one? <laughs> Small space. I mean, you can see Four that. Four motorcycles. That, that silver van that's there. Yeah. That's one. yeah. And it wouldn't be marked. It would just be designated by a signage. And it, uh, designated a 15-minute space, or? Yes, 15 minute spaces, and I think we discussed last time from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Is that the typical? Okay. Thank you. Would it make sense to convert the, the blue space to be an additional event? I think that was put there in the past because people have been trouble seeing something out of blue. So, delivery time is not in school with people. Are Teachers are leaving school. Um, from during the school day, you're not allowed to work in that blue area. Really? Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a it's certain uh, between eight a.m. to four p.m. Yeah. Hmm. Because kids are crossing right. I mean, that's a really that the driveway into Bridge Street School is really tricky. It's one way, you've got people always who are like, back, you know, church go in there and the car's coming this way and someone has to back out and um, people are always backing out of that driveway onto Union, but kids are crossing right there. It's a, it's a tough spot. So it'll, this space will actually help eliminate some of the cars going down into the, the parking area. I hope Hopefully. you're right. Jim. I hope so. so <laughs> it'll, stop, me. it'll stop thousands of cars. Can't <laughs> 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 related, or maybe it's not related thing. So at some point, I date myself because my daughter's 23, and so she was going to elementary school, so it's been a while. But at some point, there's discussion about was there room for some parking, sort of per uh, perpendicular parking in front of the cemetery, from Parsons to cemetery. But did that not work? Was that eliminated? Do you know that history? Perpendicular parking. Do you mean parallel parking? No, perpendicular angle parking. Right. I'm trying oh, to get a few more spots in there. Yeah. But I don't. I mean, I haven't heard. I mean, I feel like that it come, people do park there. Yeah, you know, yeah. There's an there's an access gate into the cemetery, so I would assume maybe Donna. I mean, I assume you, that's how trucks get in there, and you wouldn't want parking over there. People park there all the time with a, in front of the big no parking. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what the conversation was. If people were parking anyway, right. let's either take them or say it's blessed. Right. Yeah. Right. And so the limited time makes me think about that. Is that a spot we should say it's okay for you know the two hours? Or, but that can be a separate conversation. But it's worth looking at. For this. Yeah, I imagine that, that poses its own problem because then you're backing out into yeah. and people are you know, another tricky where you know you you're often pulling over the side to let another car come situation. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we um, accept this ordinance proposal and send it on to council with a positive recommendation. Is that right? Um, I spaced down in the middle, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll <laughs> <laughs> right. So we're. Uh, so this is a proposal, so we're, are we moving to have the DPW draft an ordinance? Yes, yes, and then we'll... It's been drafted. Oh, it's been then, drafted. yes. 
So, so I move a positive recommendation. I'm sorry. Is that, did you just say that? I no, you second. said it better. Go ahead, do it. I move a positive recommendation on this proposal. Second. Any discussion? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? Any comments? Any discussion? Uh, one thing I, I, I have to add is I do need to speak to neighbors here and let them know what's coming down the pike. And, uh, but I will be supporting this, so there's a chance we may get some pushback here. But, um, about making just that green area limited? Just making, I don't know, we'll see. There's often people parking there when in the morning, but um, anyway. I don't think, I mean, I would imagine the neighbors like it because I see two cars often try and squish right in there. Yes. Um, which I'm not sure this is going to solve. But. So, uh, all in favor of sending this ordinance forward, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, all right, we're on to J. Pleasant Street. We did that. It's already been passed by council. Um, Henshaw. You know, I. Who wrote this? Oh, <laughs> it was good. It was good. It's really good. So um, Henshaw. I'm trying to. That we discussed this as well, and I think that we sent this over to. Yeah, so we, we. This was an ordinance change to switch parking to the opposite side of Henshaw Ave after resident complaints. Um, so we put new signs up and then two new requests were submitted because folks were having difficulty getting out of their driveway or delivery trucks um, had restricted access. Um, so it, there were two requests made at number 14 Henshaw. Um, cars were parking to block the stairs leading right. into the house, and at number 29, cars were parked directly across from the driveway, and large vehicles couldn't enter and exit the driveway. Um, so there were two requests that were made um, to have no parking zones in these particular locations. Um, we, we've not heard any music. So why is it, I feel like we, but we discussed this last time, right? So why is it back on? We, we decided not to do anything further, I thought. Are you? Let's look at those minutes. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to table this discussion until next month. And in particular, the, 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 the situation to look at is at 14, because it's hard to figure out how, um, how to get, I think, two parking spaces there and not block the, the property's um, uh, front walkway. That's what the issue is. It's, it's 14 and 29, but I, I would also say that this this is kind of a larger issue of, of when we are considering these parking requests and you restrict parking to one side or the other and then there's unintended consequences of that which is now people can't get into their stairs or people can't get out of their driveways and so what you end up is, with is multiple ordinances restricting parking on one street and, and that's more of a big picture. Didn't we determine that the stairs weren't the stairs were not the only way to access this property, though, right? I think we, we pulled up a photo. Okay. Um, but just to reiterate, you've had no further complaints. No further complaints. Okay. You can table it, but I'm, I, I mean, I feel like <laughs> we've done, you know, we've, done we've solved we some of the problems and 
You know what? Um, here's what I, I'm going to table it, and I'm going to ask uh, the counselor from that board to, um, you know, whether or not what further action they would like to see, and um, otherwise we'll, we'll move on. So table it till next month. It'll be on the agenda, and um, and hopefully we'll get uh, some uh, report from Councilor Bidwell. So, um, all right, that is what we have on the agenda for today. Uh, is there any new business? Is there a, well, I, I just want to just say one thing. I thank you everybody for uh, that, um, that uh, the agenda has been, it was a little bit messy today. There was a few items we didn't quite get to uh, that we'll get to next month and um, but anyway, I want to thank you for um, putting up with the sketchy agenda today. So, just so you know, that I'm going to corner, I'm not going to pay for make the next meeting. Thank you. And you know what? If you could send us an email, because Beth and I kind of track ahead of time who's going to be here and who's not, and um, and that um, that there's there's interest in people uh, filling out the, the two vacant citizen seats and. Um, that I do know that um, the mayor has sent forward one name already that will be going to council tomorrow for referral or Thursday for referral. Um, and I don't think the agenda's been posted yet, so I'm not gonna say who it is. So it should be posted now. It's Devin Bruce, who who would be a terrific, terrific addition. So um, but we have other people interested as well. So we're gonna fill that up and then we, we won't be running into these quorum issues that have been nagging us for a few months now. So, all right, I wanna thank everybody. Uh, it, do we have a motion? Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Everybody.